Christ Way Church welcomes you. Let's hear what God has to say through Pastor Anu. Your faith is dead without works. That's the topic of our message this evening. Your faith is dead without works. We have a good God and in our difficulties and in our most painful times if we cry out to God he will definitely answer us in psalms 121 we read in my distress i called to the lord and he answered me the psalmist is telling i took my distress to the lord and i cried out to him and he answered my prayers but many believers in christ spend a lot of time being upset about the things that they cannot do anything about as a result they have no peace and they don't enjoy life they go to church they attend all the meetings and they hear what they should do but they don't put them into practice that's their problem you should put them into practice what you hear that's why today you are here isn't it we have a good god if we call out to him in our distress really really if we cry out to god in your pain god answer us and james 2:26 says faith without works is dead and proverb 3:5 through 8 we read Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths be not wise in your own eyes and fear the Lord and turn from evil it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones these verses are teaching us if we are not leaning on our understanding but if we depend upon god's understanding definitely we will see so much of deliverance from the problems that we are stuffing inside our problems that we are stuffing inside we have no way to come out we know that certain things financial assistance won't help us medical aid will not help us only god can help us those things god is telling we should not lean on our understanding those times we should do what god says so when we depart from our evil sinful nature that is not only useful for our salvation but also for our health and welfare of our body and the fear of our god will prevent us from all the sickness bible is telling jesus is our healer if we have the fear of god and live we can be away from the sickness and first we need to believe that if we obey god with our natural bodies and we do things as unto god it will invite supernatural response from heaven when we open the bible when we see the commandments of god often we find it very difficult especially in times of difficulties when you go through difficulties you really find it's difficult to obey but if you humble down before god and obey him you can really get the supernatural provision from heaven you will unlock the supernatural provision from heaven so many have faith in god but no faith in the obedience of the word of god that is the problem many believe in god but they don't believe that they have to obey god and live the scripture teaches us that god will judge us and repay us according to our works proverb 24 12 and romans 2 6 through 8 paul is making clear to the believers in christ god will indeed judge each one of us according to our work if we are able to lead our life full of persistent and ongoing obedience not just repentance alone god will definitely bless us not only we get the eternal life but we will see that we will get many blessings from god many unsolvable problems will be solved he is god isn't it see if we can do anything with our unsolvable problem we don't need god that's the reason many people don't believe in god isn't it so if you believe in god you should know that is supernatural provision that supernatural provision how to unlock you should learn that is through the obedience to the word of god so works are the natural fruit of faith faith which saves us is the faith which result in action james 2 18 through 20 since faith that saves obeys if we are not obedient then the faith is not valid whatever you say that you have so much of faith in god but you are not ready to obey god bible is telling that your faith is not valid it has of no use it is a dead faith and faith is just as important as air we breathe 
and faith is the energy that nourishes our heart and soul faith is the real strength for our soul when you are in problem if you know that you get the solution from god that is the strength to your soul isn't it that is the energy to your soul it is just like we need air to breathe we need the strength without the supernatural strength our money our education whatever we have it has of no use isn't it so faith in god faith in god is the strength to your soul the energy to your soul and faith is the essential part of our spiritual life without faith it is impossible to please god hebrews 11:6 says faith is the important factor in our life that we have started in christ and real faith is the faith accompanied by action faith and action go together faith without action is dead faith action means obedience to what god says our faith can be measured only through obedience and obedience is the visible expression of the invisible faith in us if you say that you have faith you should obey what god says god will not tell you what you cannot obey always we should remember that but when we go through the difficult situations the commandment that god says we find it very difficult to obey isn't it but when we obey we can see the supernatural provision released to that problem you should experience it so if you are confident in your faith but disobey god's word you cannot said to have faith and trusting in god is perhaps the most critical and the most difficult thing for christians today am i right trusting in god is the most difficult thing for the christians today easy time you may trust god but when you are going through the troubles and difficulties and painful situations can you trust god that's the reason i told you trusting in god is the most difficult thing for christians today hebrews 11:8 we read by faith abraham obeyed god perfect obedience to god would mean love among men peace and joy in our hearts in difficult times that's what we need other times we have joy and peace but in difficult times where do we find joy and peace where do we find can you tell me if you trust in god you get peace and joy that's why you are in christ otherwise there is no use of christ in your life you should know that god will not leave you and god has a purpose for what you are going through that is very difficult for the people to believe our will brings envy malice anger jealousy bitterness fight worry fear etc if we grow in faith we grow in love if you remain in your old sinful nature understand you don't have faith i am not telling you are not growing in faith you don't have faith if you are the same person after you have come to jesus christ also if you remain as the same person you have still anger you don't have any self control over your character jealousy anger bitterness whatever that shows you have no faith okay so if you grow in faith you will grow in love everybody has a family and to build the relationship in love we need a family in the family we build relationship the loving relationship should be built in the family isn't it so family is a loving community and from the spiritual point of view god gives a spiritual family to every child of god that is church when you are born again baptized you have a second family that is spiritual family that is church if you know you have a physical family that is to have a love relationship you should know you have a spiritual family also that is church to have a love relationship in the church you will learn how to grow in love how to grow in faith how to grow in obedience children will learn from parents isn't it in the same way when we are born again baptized we are children babies we have whole lot to learn from our spiritual family and there in the spiritual family we have spiritual father mother as the head of the family who knows the best for the family and work towards it and also we have spiritual brothers and sisters in the family in the family children are commanded to obey 
and honor their parents in the Lord. Ephesians 6, 1 and 2. And we should honor and obey our spiritual parents also. In the church, you will have spiritual parents. You should know that spiritual parents are appointed to look after the children. I am appointed as a spiritual leader to look after you. Whoever is coming to me, they are my children. Whether you are elder to me or younger to me. But you are my children, isn't it? So you should understand, in every church, to look after the church, there is a father. And God has given the duty to look after the children. It is just like you have parents. Parents have the duty to look after the children. You learn from your parents. In the same way, God has appointed parents to teach the children. So you have parents in the church, and you have sisters and brothers in the church to grow in love grow in faith so without church you cannot grow in faith and grow in obedience and grow in love so we are also commanded to love each other and build up each other encourage each other daily first thessalonians 5 11 romans 14 19 and hebrews 3 13 and we are commanded to attend every church meeting regularly many of you don't want to come regularly to church meetings isn't it see that is the family get together if you have a family get together, you will run towards that family get together. So our every church meeting is a family get together. How can you say that you cannot come? If you love your family, if you love your siblings, you want to gel with them, you want to move around with them. Isn't it? You will have that connection. The same way, if you have a church, you should know that you have loving brothers and sisters there. You should be mingling with them. Not only that, you will learn to love each other. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. You should not avoid the church meetings. And if you grow in faith, you will grow in love and care your physical and the spiritual family. Faith is the foundation of obedience. But to disbelieve is to disobey God and grow in doubt and anger, hatred, pride, ego, jealousy and all the sinful nature. Did you get me? If you have faith in God, Definitely, you will try to change your personality. Definitely. But you say that you have faith in God, but you are not trying to do anything to develop your personality. Bible is telling you have a dead faith. You don't have faith. That faith will have no use for you. And Hebrews 5, 8, we read, Jesus learned obedience through suffering. It is important to understand that Jesus learned obedience through what he went through. Suffering. Jesus learned obedience. Jesus had to learn obedience. That doesn't mean he didn't know how to obey or he was prone to rebelliousness. Rather, he learned obedience in the sense that he experienced what it is to obey. That's what we have to learn. We should experience what it is to obey. We should experience how to love people, how to forgive people, how to bear with people. We should experience to be patient with the people, to bless the people in the place of jealousy, to have peace where we want to fight. Many are fighter cocks in the family. To control your fight and love the people and to forgive people, you need faith. You need to experience that. See, Jesus learned obedience through what he went through. Jesus learned. That means Jesus had to experience. In the same way, we have to learn obedience. So when we learn obedience, we will experience obedience. Are you getting me? Then we know what it means to be loving people. What it means to be forgiving people. What it means to be blessing people in place of cursing them. or having jealousy on them. You get so much of peace. You get so much of joy in your heart. This is God. People will say, God is love. Then you should experience God. How do you experience God? Experiencing love is experiencing God. We can understand that joy and peace. Okay. So if you don't understand that experience, if you don't experience the obedience, you will not understand this God. See, I am connecting faith and obedience. I told you, when you obey, you will experience God. Hmm? So, when you are obeying, you will understand who God is. Really, you will understand. 
that joy you will get that peace you will get and you get the wisdom how to deal with the situations hallelujah so we too should experience obedience it is not an option for us it is highly recommended for us john 14 15 says if you love me you will obey my commandment jesus told us isn't it if you love me you will obey my commandments see that is the faith and we should experience the difficulty in obedience first peter 4 1 we read we should suffer in the flesh to experience the obedience but only by repenting from our sin we don't experience obedience see people will live on asking forgiveness will you experience obedience the people who are depending upon forgiveness are they going to experience obedience no they will never understand what is love they will never understand what is peace and joy because every time they fall they will get up and ask god forgive me then how can they experience obedience how can they experience love how can they experience joy peace and patience isn't it so we learn obedience and we grow in obedience only through our sufferings jesus learned obedience through his suffering this is for us do you have sufferings today that is to learn obedience to god you may think why i should learn obedience why do you learn obedience to have solution for your problems okay so we learn obedience and we grow in obedience only through our sufferings we go through in our life and this truth we should accept and we should understand then it is a comfort for every child of god to know our troubles are not chance occurrence or just natural events or pointless harassment but they are the disciplining hand of god hebrews 12:6 through 8 we are god's children he is teaching us obedience perfect obedience to himself see that is very difficult for us we read in proverb third chapter do not lean on your understanding trust in the lord this is very difficult for us but god is telling trust in the god i will give you solution but we will not be we will only have questions why 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 so we are god's children he is teaching us obedience to perfect our obedience to himself god will not tolerate disobedience to any of his children that we should understand he doesn't tolerate disobedience if you are a parent if you know that you love your children to be obedient but you say something and your children do something else do you tolerate it no if you are a parent you know the same way god will not tolerate disobedience in us god will make us understand what we need to obey as an obedient child we should just obey him it is human nature to run away from what is painful and seek joy and peace in our own ways this is why people don't come to god because when they come to god they know that oh god has got rules and regulations eh god doesn't have rules and regulation to pain you God has rules and regulation to give you a life what god is telling trust him be peaceful be joyful don't fight with the people don't fight with the situation love them so you may think oh if i behave in all such things how my problem is going to be solved that is how god is going to solve the problem so as a christian you should never have this doubt you are hearing the message from so many years Jesus learned obedience through suffering today you and me have sufferings that is to learn obedience perfect obedience hallelujah so it is human nature to run away from what is painful and seek joy and peace in our own ways by sending or allowing tribulation on us god causes us to turn away from the worldly nature to godly nature So we learn obedience through what we suffer the love of the world in us and the love of the sin in us will cause us to disobey God Romans 7:20 and God causes us to turn away from sins by sending fiery sufferings on us it is very difficult for us to understand Psalms 119:71 
and obedience is doing what we should do when we should do this is called immediate obedience delayed obedience is disobedience procrastination okay about that i am going to talk next week god's people in the old testament instead of obeying god they murmured and complained for each trouble you know that and they said that god hated us to destroy us deuteronomy 126 through 28 how wicked is the sin of murmuring and grumbling this is what we to do when problem comes god is telling trust him and give thanks to god trust him and be joyful and peaceful in your heart because god will never leave us never forsake us do what god says but we forget everything till then we understand everything we read the bible we hear the preaching we understand the subject but when problem comes we forget everything isn't it just think about that same thing happened here same thing the israelites were doing for each trouble they were grumbling and murmuring hmm? are we not continuing the same thing how much ever we hear we hear from the spiritual conferences and we go back and we face with problems we start our grumbling and murmuring isn't it we just forget it we don't know we have to put them into practice we just hear we just go away you think you have faith no that is my subject today if you are forgetting what you hear if you are not remembering to obey what you hear let me tell you my friend you don't have faith without faith you cannot please god faith in god people will go to temple people will go to church people will just ask god god do something to me god is not the god to do something like that as a christian you learned isn't it our problems are the problems in our heart god look into our heart our heart has to be cleansed so we should understand how wicked is the sin of murmuring and complaining not only did they murmur but also they feared for their every problem same thing happens to us if we start grumbling and murmuring fear will increase in us fear about your situation will increase in you you will think just like this israelites what did they say they said that god is hating us god hated us to destroy us we also say the same thing isn't it but when a problem comes you have come to christ you received the faith you know that yes this problem is for my cleansing god said not to murmur and not to grumble do everything without grumbling and murmuring praise god whatever happens first thessalonians 5:18 whatever happens give him thanks yes i will give thanks you will not fear about the things that are before you you know that yes this is for some purpose god has a purpose definitely i'm telling you but as you are grumbling and murmuring you are losing your faith what will happen to you fear will increase you are thinking something bad is going to happen isn't it always you think the bad things about your situations your painful situation because you don't have faith in god are you getting me so we also tell like how israelites told god god hates us and the problems will destroy us and even when we grumble and murmur for each trouble instead of giving thanks what we are telling to god is we cannot obey what you are telling did you get me i am talking about dead faith or faith without work is dead you should check in yourself whether you have faith in god or not so each time you are grumbling and murmuring or each time we are losing our joy for our problems we are telling god god i cannot learn obedience through this suffering because you are telling me to be joyful peaceful eh? but i am not able to i don't think my people will change i don't think my situation will change i don't know why things are going bad to us 
you don't know but god knows isn't it so fear will increase and your doubt will increase you will be confused all these are happening because of lack of faith if you have faith confidence in god should increase the strength in your heart should increase the strength to face challenge should increase because the person who is standing with you is not a human being he is god nothing is impossible with god so you should know that yes i am obeying god and standing with god he will solve my problems see that confidence will come that confidence is our strength that is the faith that is the reason i told you faith in god is like oxygen we breathe without oxygen we cannot live in the same way i tell you without faith the people cannot live they will be living with their breathing i'm not talking about that with that peace and joy and contentment and satisfaction and confidence isn't it that we have to acquire so our grumbling and murmuring and being sad and fearful for our each problem shows we are not ready to obey god each time we are in that position we are telling god no i can't obey i will be like how i am so faith and obedience are inseparable and faith can be proven only through obedience please understand believers only through obedience you can prove your faith if a man is confident in his faith but disobeys god's word and keep falling in sin asking only repentance but not bearing the fruit worth repentance matthew 3:8 and acts 26:20 we cannot said to have faith those who have faith always obey god's word because they are ready first peter 1 13 says we should prepare our mind for action so if you have faith you will be always preparing for battle isn't it you know that opposition will come opposition will come always how do we face not with our character with god's character hallelujah this needs practice my friends you need to practice every day you need to practice this is called spiritual practice eh to become a perfect person or to become perfect in any subject it takes practice isn't it practice will make anything easy even obedience let me tell you initially you may feel that obedience is very difficult but as you keep on practicing it become easy for you i always tell you when you start exercising when you are lifting a weight of 10 kg first day it will be difficult for you but as you keep on practicing it will be very light for you after some time you can again add 5 more kg or 10 more kg you can carry 20 kg then 30 like that you can increase isn't it it is the same my friends understand obedience those who are thinking obedience is difficult for you it is because you are not practicing when you have to practice obedience in your difficult times in your opposition otherwise you are fine isn't it when people are okay when things are okay you don't have to have godly character you have godly character you are fine you will be loving to people you have joy you have peace but when things go wrong how to control how to control your anger you are losing your peace and joy but god is telling rejoice always rejoice always how do you do that you have to practice my friends practice when in your difficult times jesus learned obedience through what he suffered and psalms 119 60 psalm says I made haste and delayed not to keep his commandments. This is what you should do. I made haste and I didn't delay to obey his commandment. You may be wondering what I am talking, how difficult it is. Isn't it? You have to practice. It is just like practice makes anything simple after some time. You are not practicing. Why you are not practicing? You are not mindful. that's the reason you are not practicing god will punish every wrong and evil in man jeremiah 30 11 whether he is a christian or a non christian or an atheist eh god's law is applicable for everyone we are happy that we came to know lord and we know god's law 
God's law is applicable for the whole world and God will punish the disobedience to his law. You should understand that. Then having known the law, if you don't obey, hallelujah. So that's the reason Psalmist is telling, I made haste and delayed not to keep his command. Colossians 3, 5 and 6 commands the believers in Christ to put to death what is earthly in us, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of this, the wrath of God is coming. People know only about the love of God. People don't know the other side of God. It is just like if you are a parent, if your children obey, you will be loving to them. You really love them. But if they disobey and go in their ways, you will have really anger and fury. In the same way, God also, we should understand about God's wrath and God's fury. But for Christians, they don't want to hear about the wrath of God. It is written in the New Testament. It is written in Colossians 3, 6. And God will punish every wrong and evil in man. Jeremiah 30, 11. God has not changed. The truth is, we have not changed either. Impurities mentioned in Colossians 3, 5 really includes all kinds of sin, any activity, any thought, any word, any action that doesn't conform to God's will in our life. That is called impurity. Here the word impurity is written in Colossians 3, 5. The sin of impurity mentioned is all kinds of sin. In all of us, impurity is there. Water is pure when there is no impurity in it. If we have to be pure, there should not be any impurity in us, any sort of sin in us. That is the perfection we have to have. So never say that that is not possible. It's all through practice. Jesus learned obedience through suffering and we too have to learn obedience through suffering. So if you absolutely and totally believed everything God has said and would you really continue to break his law? That is what the children of God are doing. It's like you pick up a bottle that you know to be filled with poison that will cause terrible pain and death in few minutes. Unless you are trying to commit suicide, how would you take a drink from that? That is what believers are doing. They know pros and cons of the law of God. But still, how dare they are to disobey God and live on a daily basis. You think you don't get the wrath of God? People don't even want to hear about that. So God tells us that sin leads to suffering and misery. God's wrath upon us ultimately as eternal death. And we need to know whether our faith is dead or alive. I am not prolonging my message today. I just want you people to know whether your faith is dead or alive. With your dead faith, you won't achieve anything. God will not answer your prayers. Without faith, you cannot please God. So you need to know whether your faith is dead or alive. Dead faith may at first glance look suspiciously like living faith. We will not understand. But in reality, it is a whitewashed tomb. Many believers are having such faith. That faith is static. You don't improve in your obedience. How do you know you have a dead faith? Are you improving in your obedience? How is your joy and peace? Are you giving thanks for everything happening in your life? How is your forgiving character? How is your self-control in every area? If you are keep falling, getting up and asking God, God forgive me, that is not called obedience. Psalmist is telling, I made haste not to delay God's commandments. Okay, so that faith is static. You don't improve in your thankful heart to God, in your righteousness, joy, peace you won't improve. You don't improve in your ministry, eh, full of fear, worries, lacking, love. Difficulty to forgive. In your ministry, you should improve. Are you improving in your ministry? If you are not improving in your ministry, you don't have faith. Okay, you should reach out to people. You should be a useful vessel to God. God loves you. You received the love of God. You understand how God is, who God is. And God said, go and give this God to others. 
so if you are not increasing in your ministry improving in your ministry you don't have faith always you should have that desire i should help the people i should work for god i should do something for god that desire should be there is it there is it increasing are you doing something for that if you are not let me tell you you have a dead faith james make it very clear what dead faith look like it doesn't manifest work faith without work is dead you have faith but no work then that is dead faith a human being is made righteous by works not faith alone one group is telling believers are made righteous by faith alone no by works james is telling righteous works okay so that is the active obedience to god's commandments living faith is dynamic active growing and good fruit producing full of love full of joy full of peace full of hope trusting god for everything when you have faith you will be always hopeful you will not have any fear you are always confident you always have strength you always have joy even if things are going bad to us you will not be sad or worried you know that things will improve that shows your faith whatever you may be facing today that seems to be painful for you you feel it is too difficult to overcome you know that nobody is there to help you but know that you can and you will overcome it when when you have a living faith yes we all go through painful situations we all have we may think that we cannot overcome but let me tell you if you have living faith in god you can overcome hallelujah and when you have living faith you can overcome your difficulties you should trust god you should not lean on your understanding this is very important when you go through a problem write it somewhere trust god do not lean on your understanding this is very important my friends if you can understand this one thing today do not lean on your understanding trust god that is faith and only by living faith yields dividends righteous blessings and eternal reward from god not with dead faith so today if you have a dead faith let me tell you today is the last day you can live with that faith have active faith let's close our eyes in prayer